If you have a TCA toxicity, what's the first thing you want to do on your patient? You want to get an EKG. Because if somebody's got TCA toxicity, it's going to cause primarily cardio toxicity, right? And it's all dependent on your QRS. If your QRS duration is greater than 100, that tells you the patient's got cardiac toxicity and you're going to go into having arrhythmias. So whenever you have a patient with TCA toxicity, how do you treat it? Sodium bicarbonate. Okay, your treatment is going to be sodium bicarbonate. Now, when it comes to TCA toxicity, are you trying to alkalinize the urine like you were doing in salicylate toxicity? No, no. you're trying to alkalinize the blood. Okay, so when it comes to TCA, your sodium has a role as well as your bicarbonate has a role. If you alkalinize your serum, then the TCA cannot bind to the cardiac myocyte. So that's why it helps. Apart from that, the sodium, if you look at your QRS complex, it is because of what? Ventricular depolarization, right? So if you look at your P, your Q, R, S complex, it's all dependent on your ventricular depolarization phase, which is essentially this phase right here, which is dependent on sodium influx. So whenever somebody takes TCA, the TCA is competing with this sodium to go in. So you giving a lot more sodium is gonna outcompete the TCA and get over the toxicity. So when you give sodium bicarb on the context of TCA toxicity, sodium plays a role and the bicarb plays a role. But these are two indications that you also want to remember whenever you're going to use the patient on a bicarbonate drip. Another important drip that you need to know that you might be using in your patient, especially in the ICU, 